Good morning, dear Sangha. Today is uh, May the 11th in the year 2008. We are in Hanoi for our uh, retreat with the title Engage Buddhism in the 21st uh, Century. It is said in the Sutra that the Dharma is something that you have to come and see for, your, for yourself. You, can, you cannot talk about the Dharma, you have to come and see by yourself, direct experience. The practice of uh, meditation is the practice of uh, having the time to look deeply into the nature of what is there. What is there is our body, our mind, and our environment. And uh, meditation provides us uh, with the keys to unlock the door of reality, so to satisfy our curiosity and our, our love. And uh, the Buddha suggests uh, many uh, ways of uh, unlocking the door of reality. And among them, the, the teaching of the three uh, doors of uh, liberation. The three doors of liberation are common to all schools of Buddhism. And the three doors of liberation is uh, emptiness, signlessness, and aimlessness. We need to remember that these are only keys to unlock reality, and that is not a description, a verbal uh, description of reality. You need the key to unlock the door and to see by yourself. You don't need a description. You cannot describe. You can only um, experience it. It's like a kind of fruit like a kiwi, a uh, mango, and after having eaten a mango, you would like to describe it to another person. How is the taste of a mango? But how can you describe the taste of a mango? It's very difficult. So reality is like that. Once you have a direct experience, you cannot describe. You may say something, you may suggest something, so that the other person will um, have a chance to get the same kind of experience. When someone asks you what is uh, the taste, how is the taste of mango, no matter how long you uh, explain to him, he or she cannot get the taste. The best way is to put into his mouth a piece of mango. <laughs> so this is uh, the, the same thing. Uh, the Buddha suggests uh, the three doors of liberation as a kind of key by which uh, you can unlock the door of reality and see for yourself, by yourself. The other day we spoke about uh, emptiness which is the first door of liberation. Emptiness, as you already know, does not mean the absence of uh, things. This morning we recited, form is emptiness. It means feelings is also emptiness. Perceptions is also emptiness. But then the sutra, the sutra continues with uh, emptiness is form. So it's very clear that emptiness is not the absence of form. Form is emptiness itself. The absence of form does not mean emptiness. Emptiness means the presence of the form, the feelings. It's very meaningful. 
But when people hear the word emptiness, they think of uh, nothingness, of the absence of uh, things, the absence of form, feelings, perceptions. So there are two things to say. First, form is emptiness, and that can create misunderstanding. So you have to add, emptiness is form. With, without the, that form, emptiness is not possible. Without form and feelings and perceptions and mental formations and consciousness, emptiness is not possible. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. It's so neat, so precise. And the other day we uh, meditated together on a rose, and we found out that a rose is made of only of non-rose elements. Looking deeply into the rose, you can only see non-rose elements, like the cloud, the sunshine, the soil, uh, the fertilizer, and so on. And if we return the sunshine to the sun, we return uh, the water to the cloud, we return the seed, we return uh, the soil to the soil, there is no flower possible. So when so many uh, elements come together, something manifests. And uh, oh. that rose cannot uh, be by herself alone. Uh, she has to interbe with non-rose elements. She is made of non-rose elements. And we ourselves are like that. We are a rose, kind of rose. We are made of non-us elements. We are made of ancestors, children, grandchildren, education, food, and consciousness, and so on. And looking deeply into uh, the five skandhas, we discover the emptiness of a separate uh, existence. We know that we inter-are with everything. We inter-are with um, everyone. So emptiness is a wonderful door if, uh, of liberation, it's a wonderful key, and if uh, you know to use it in your meditation, you can unlock the door of reality. And when you touch the truth of emptiness, there is no more separation, there is no more complex, there is no more fear. You are no longer locked into the prison of a separate uh, self. And then with that huge understanding, there is no longer jealousy, um, craving, fear, or discrimination. So emptiness is a true door of liberation. And we should use emptiness as an instrument. Emptiness is not a description of reality. It is only an instrument, a, a key to unlock the door of reality. Look at this uh, glass. And we agree that uh, this glass is empty. But the good question to ask is, uh, empty of what? Like the flower, the glass is full of everything. The sand, the heat, the artisan, the factory, the water, the sunshine, everything could be seen in the presence of a glass. So like the rose, the glass is full of the cosmos. Everything is in a glass, including our consciousness. So empty does not mean empty of uh, the cosmos. 
You may say that the glass is empty of tea. <laughs> you may say that like that. But that's not absolute truth. Because if uh, there is no tea, people will not try to make uh, glasses. And then, <coughs> but it is helpful to say that uh, the glass is empty of uh, tea. But it, it is not empty of uh, air. Well, the glass is full of air. In order to be full or to be empty, the glass has to be there. In order to be empty, the glass has to be there. So emptiness does not mean the absence of the glass. So to think of emptiness as uh, nothingness, non-being is a big mistake. The glass is empty in the here and the now. And uh, is empty of a separate uh, uh, self, a separate existence. A glass can only be and to be with everything. A glass cannot be by itself alone. And uh, if we look deeply, we see that uh, the glass or the rose transcends the notion of uh, being and non-being. For that, we may like to move into the second door of liberation, which is uh, signlessness or marklessness, the appearance, the outer appearance. It's wonderful to learn how to look things with the eyes of uh, signlessness. You perceive something because that something has a sign, that has an appearance has a form. And when that form, that uh, sign is not there, you may think of it as non-existing. Suppose we look into the sky and we see a cloud. And we have the, ten the tendency to say that the cloud is there, the cloud is existing. And we ascribe to the cloud uh, the quality of uh, being. The cloud is something that is there. But the cloud can be transformed into something else at any time. A cloud can be transformed into rain or snow or ice or just uh, water vapor. And when the, the cloud is transformed into rain, we don't see the cloud anymore. The sky is empty. The sky is desperately empty because you don't see any cloud. And you will want to describe the cloud in terms of non-being. The cloud is not there. But you know that is not true. The cloud is still there in her new form, the rain. So if you are smart enough, when you look at the rain, you can st still see the cloud. The cloud is always there, but in another sign, another mark, another appearance, another form. And when you pour the hot water into the glass with mindfulness, and concentration, you may notice that you are pouring cloud into your glass. Because this is uh, 
This T is the cloud. This is the continuation of the cloud. And the cloud you don't see in the sky. You cannot say that it is no longer there. It is still there in another form. It is now in the form of the tea. And when you drink tea with that kind of insight, you see that you are drinking your cloud. And there's a lot of cloud in, in your body already. You are made of cloud. At least uh, 70%. and they need the clouds every day. When you are able to see the continuation of the cloud in the tea, that is already a big step. You don't qualify the, your cloud as non-being anymore. You know that non-being cannot is an idea, is a notion that cannot be applied to your cloud. Because uh, something that is cannot be reduced to non-being. It is impossible for your cloud to die. Your cloud can become rain or snow or ice, but your cloud cannot die. Because to die is from something, you become nothing. From someone, you suddenly become no one. That is to die. But looking around, you don't see anything like that from being you become non-being. And this is uh, the practice of uh, signlessness. Looking into the cloud deeply, you see that the nature of uh, the cloud is the nature of no death. Because it is certified by you that a cloud can never die. A cloud can become something else, but a cloud cannot die. You cannot reduce anything into nothing. And if you just lost someone who is very close to you, dear to you, please look again. That person has not disappeared. That person has not become no one, nothing. If you look deeply, you can see her continuation in different kinds of forms and signs. And that person may be very close to you, but you don't feel her presence, his presence. And you cry, you have a lot of grief, and you say, darling, where are you? You are no longer there for me. Looking deeply, you see that uh, it is impossible for your beloved to want to die. She, she is now continued in her new uh, transform, uh, manifestations. And we need only to look deeply to recognize her. Like when you look deeply into the tea, you recognize your beloved uh, uh, cloud because tea is made of cloud. So, um, touching the truth of no death, you are no longer victim of your grief and your fear. And if uh, the nature of your cloud is no death, it is also no birth. Because to be born means, that is our definition. From nothing, you suddenly become something. That is our definition of birth. From no one, you suddenly become someone. 
and looking deeply with the eyes of meditator, you don't see anything like that. You know, we know that a cloud is a, only a continuation of the water vapor. And 90% of the vapor that is in the air come from the ocean. Before a cloud manifests herself as a cloud, she had been water vapor. And you cannot see water vapor. It is in the air, invisible, but you cannot qualify it as non-existing. In fact, the air in Hanoi is quite damp. There's a lot of water in it. And when there is a wind that blows that uh, air uh, to a mountain, and then that air will come up on the slope of the mountain, higher and higher and higher. And up there it will encounter cold air. And the, phenomena, the phenomenon of uh, condensation will take place. And the water, pa- uh, water vapor uh, can be transformed into tiny, tiny uh, droplets of water. Very tiny, very light. And because of that, you see a cloud. A, a cloud is born from water vapor. Or you can say it better. A cloud is a continuation of the wa- water vapor. In the morning, when you wake up, you can see a uh, fog and cloud very close to the ground. That is because during the night uh, the ground gets cold and the water vapor touching that cold uh, become fog. Tiny drops of uh, water are formed and now you can see it. So before the cloud is seen as a cloud, it had been water vapor, it has been the ocean, the lakes, the rivers, and so on. So the cloud is only a continuation, not a birth. A cloud does not come from, has not come from nothing. And the true nature of the cloud is the the nature of no birth. Because to be born means from nothing you suddenly become something. From no one you suddenly become someone. And that definition does not coincide with reality as we observe it. The nature of things is the nature of no birth and no death. There's only manifestation continuation. On the date of your birth, as recorded in the birth certificate, you seem to begin to exist from that uh, hour, from that date, but that is not true. Before uh, the nurse deliver uh, the baby, uh, the baby had been there in the womb of the mother at least eight, nine months. So that moment is not really the moment of birth. It's a, only a moment of continuation. So if you want to push uh, things back nine months, and you, may, you may think that the moment of conception, of your conception, is the, your moment of birth. It may be closer to the truth, but it is not the truth. Because before that moment, you had been already there, half in your father and half in your mother. Uh, That moment of conception 
is not a moment when from nothing you become something, from no one you become someone. No, that is only a moment of continuation. There is no birth in the eyes of a meditator. There is no death. So next time when you celebrate your birthday, instead of singing happy birthday, uh, you may like, your friends may like to sing happy continuation day <laughs> to you, my friend. And even When someone dies, this is also a continuation. And you can continue more or less beautifully. It depends on your way of life. Birth is a sign, sign, an appearance, a form, elusive, tricky. Death is also a sign, and you should not be caught by signs. When your cloud is no longer there, uh, you may recognize her in her new form, the rain. Why you are crying for, for your cloud? Your cloud has become the rain, falling down very joyfully to the ground. And your cloud is calling you in her new form, Darling, 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 don't you see me? I am still here. I love you. So this uh, key uh, given by the Buddha should be used by us to unlock the door of reality and to touch the nature of no birth and no death your own nature of no birth and no death, and the nature of your beloved one. She is, she has, her, her true nature is the nature of no birth and no death. The Dharma, yes, can help relieve uh, suffering, can bring a relief. But the Dharma can provide the kind of practice that can uproot all kinds of suffering. And practicing deep looking into the heart of reality and discovering the nature of no birth and no death of everything of oneself. We can transcend fear, anguish, despair, separation. And this is the gift of the Dharma, deep Dharma, the practice of looking deeply with concentration. And the insight you get is a liberating factor from, that will liberate you from your fear, your despair, your separation. And that is why it is called a door of liberation, signlessness. The first door of liberation is uh, shunyata, emptiness, and the second one is uh, animita, uh, signlessness. Birth is a sign. And death is another sign. That is only on the appearance. And you can be deceived by the sign, by the appearance. In the Diamond Sutra, which is a very famous sutra in the Zen circle, 
it is said that where there is a sign, there is always a deception. Phạm sở hữu tướng, giai thì hư vọng. There is a sign, there is a deception, sign. That is why the meditator should break through to the sign in order to get the nature of what is, our true nature, the nature of reality which is free from the sign of birth and death, the appearance of birth and death. When you perceive something, either with our eyes or ear or nose or tongue or mind, we tend to qualify that something is uh, existing. And when we don't perceive them, we think of them as non-existing. The water vapor, we know that it is there. It's not because we don't see it that it's not there. In this uh, Dhamma home, it is a Dhamma home. There's a lot of uh, television, radio signals crossing. But you don't see them. If you have a post of television or radio and they will capture, they will translate. So what you do not perceive does, uh, cannot be described as non-being. And what uh, you already perceive is not sure that it is like that. And thanks to the meditation on emptiness, that you can see that a rose is empty. And because a rose is empty, that is why she can be a rose. A very famous uh, teacher in the second century, Nagarjuna, said that thanks to the meaning of uh, emptiness, everything is possible. Thanks to the nature of emptiness, a rose is possible. You are possible. Everything is possible. Dị hữu không nghĩa cổ. Nhất thiết pháp đắc thành. Thanks to emptiness, everything can be established, can, can be possible. So emptiness is not a negative uh, note of music. The same is true with impermanence. Impermanence is wonderful because without impermanence, nothing can be possible. Suppose 
we want to to plant corn and you plant a seed of corn in the soil and if the plant of corn is not impermanent it it remains a seed of corn forever thanks to impermanence that the seed of corn can sprout and can become a plant of corn and your little girl can become a beautiful young lady that is thanks to impermanence and if there is a dictatorship everywhere uh, uh, somewhere if things are not impermanent you will have to suffer that dictatorship for a long time and that is why instead of complaining about impermanence you have to say long live impermanence <laughs> So this is uh, a famous sentence uh, 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 made by Nagarjuna. A teacher in India, author of the Mahaprasna Paramita Shastra, Daiti Dolum. And he said that thanks to emptiness, everything is possible. When you come to Plum Village in France to visit in the month of uh, March, you, can, you may see bare um, hills around. Even when you come to uh, by April, you don't see much, but uh, the farmers have already plowed the land and planted the seeds of uh, sunflowers. So at that moment, the month of May, when the farmer um, went through their field, uh, they can already see the sunflowers in their mind, because they know that they have planted the seeds. You come in the month of uh, July, June or July, you see a lot of sunflowers very ex uh, manifesting very beautiful, be beautifully uh, around Plum Village. So when you do not see the sunflowers, that does not mean that the sunflower is not, are not there. They are there, but they have not manifested to you. It's like in winter, we don't see uh, butterflies and uh, other kind of uh, dragonflies and so on. And you may, have, you may have the impression that they have, they they are already, they have already, all of them have already died. But when spring comes, they will manifest again. So the notion of being and non-being are also signs. And we should uh, 